the best moments of Dead Island 2. Elements often missing from titles, even like Dying Light 2, were the moments when exploration turned to breathtaking danger, when a dark rumor amateurishly sprinted around corner turned into a surprise party for one, and where the presents were just dead ends in a dark hallway, with enemies everywhere, like reverse candles on a cake, removing bits of light every time I found one. Many zombie games exist, but Dead Island 2, more so than its own originator and the titles that share developer lineage, has offered so many fun and horror mixed with surprise moments. But is that enough? Is the combat fun? How does it sound? Is the world fun to explore? These questions and more are answered next. Thanks to the devs for giving me a code. As always, I buy a copy of every single game I review, so my cash is on the line just like yours. I give it away to a subscriber or commenter, so make sure you do that in the comments section. Dead Island 2 plays out like what Lost would have been if it was on HBO with people eating one another instead of arm wrestling over some boysenberries all day, where a couple people can group together for a bit, but where you never know who you can trust and for how long. Temporary friendships built to further the chances of escape and then crumbling like so many graham crackers. For a game so long in development, Dead Island 2 offers something... Well, that's pretty concrete, and this time frame of games announced with huge PowerPoint Twitter presentations about how big they are and how they can offer 200 hours of gameplay, ignoring the lack of adjectives describing the enjoyment during that time frame, Dead Island 2 is here saying, hey, you know what, we're going to try to offer you 25 to 30 hours of fun gameplay. It's fundamentally changed from, as well as factually similar to, the original game. Here, the game opens with the infection taking people out on an airplane, and that crashes with you picking out a number of survivors from the the group that live and then learning the ropes as you help the few people that made it through the initial fireball of that airplane wreck, emerging from one fire into the firestorm of the world's end. And that's a story. Each survivor you choose has their own perks and overall gameplay style, with nothing overtly surprising as the archetypes of tank and DPS and others leak through, even if they're not actually using that nomenclature throughout the game. If you're familiar with Dead Island, much of 2 feels the same way. If you're not, Dead Island's a solo or up to three player co-op game with you going out there trying to work through the story proper all the while killing, crafting and coming to grips with item puzzles throughout a post-apocalyptic theme park of a world. If that theme park was visitors deciding to gnaw on each other for sport and seem to occasionally remember just a bit about their past lives while they're electrocuting each other, cutting off each other's limbs or lighting each other on fire. But fire and all those other elements aren't a problem in Dead Island 2. It's a tool. Where here, continued crafting and manufacturing of items stands right alongside the original game with its manufacturing tables laced out like mini facilities updated as you find new recipes and discover new concoctions. A mealtime MacGyver replacing bubblegum with battery acid and then slathering it on a sword. Putting these items together, all sorts of elemental and strange combinations for weapons, allows you to augment them, not only visually, but change their damage types, which helps you do more damage, take out more enemies, and explore and move the missions forward. But the island itself, here, just LA, is a good deal different than the original title sojourns into the gonged out areas of tropical islands. And the small areas that you could drive to in the original title aren't here, but instead there's a travel system with each of the locations much more like hubs with shortcuts, traps, enemy encounters encounters and people to help and missions to attain and complete with a fast map travel system built in later on where usually titles especially as memory and system platforms have grown in complexity where we see these title sequels blossom out here dead island has instead tightened down and whether that's a reflection of its troubled development i don't know but it feels like a familiar shoe that you can trust versus a brand new set that look nice but might be questionable after a couple miles that means you're not climbing towers or finding every single herb in a block or always facing the same map mess of open world games. In exchange for clarity, the hubs are not huge, but most have a couple set pieces and many, especially later on, spread out in very surprising ways, even if they're contained areas. And that makes it feel less like sandboxing, which is where Dying Light 2 went and is instead more focused on, even if just a small amount, what is there right in front of you and very interesting locations. And this offers a slightly different feel to the game. And that actually works for it. The combat, not always. The combat is a bit more cumbersome than the original game. And while it nails it many times, like for example, getting a trap set just right in a surf shop, gone are the original game's long skill lists and masteries in trade of a card system that feels more rewarding at first, but then less and less complex and unique as you dive into it. But just like the original Dead Island, Dead Island 2 has that over the top slashing and hacking, hitting and splitting of enemies' heads all the way through it. Each weapon hits in unique ways, with the blades slicing bits of flesh off, the larger clubs breaking bones, and even bigger ones throwing enemies around the location like ragdolls. 
Combat can feel weighty enough with some of the weapons. Swiping through an enemy, then you sprint around, you drop kick a guy in riot gear, then run down a ramp and kick two more, bashing them down some stairs. That can feel great. However, in the busier times, it's hard not to feel that the game needs a bit more tightening up, especially because its use of light attacks, which are responsive, and the game's heavy attacks, which hit incredibly hard, but also seem to not only have an odd delay to indicate that they are a heavy attack, just aren't super responsive, requiring many times a second hit on the button to get them to actually work. The gore system here replicates and simulates internals, so smashing someone to death with an old rusty wrench sees skin flying off and innards questionably aged, shake and jiggling like separate parts inside of a bare spare rib cage. Once you pick up guns, the game changes to both a long and mid-range game, with you changing out quickly into the up-close weapons, throwing out makeshift grenades, and then laying enemies out afar with machine guns. There's also other skills you can get later in the game that I won't spoil here, though while the game adds guns and that adds that long range, I can't say I love their feel. They feel much like the original game, as a good get out of jail free card, but ultimately just not as fleshed out or even really focused like the up close weapons. I'm fine with that because that's what the game is about, but for those people who run in and hope that they're gonna get guns right away, you don't, and when you do, at least to me, they weren't necessarily the best. But there's almost childlike freedom that is the best in Dead Island 2. Whether you perfectly stack your skills to build one another with perfect blocks, resulting in stamina building, or adding moves that let you jump kick or flying jump kick into enemies, or you ignore all that and you just sort of put them together and run around in circles, slashing and kicking and laughing each time you take out one of the zombies teetering over with your hits. Combine this with excellent exploration, shortcuts, environmental traps, and some awesome side quests or environmental storytelling that just adds flavor and you get a game where the resulting output is that all of these parts work together in varying degrees of success and result in a game that doesn't make you feel hampered if you want to go another way and that freedom and flexibility while still more contained is a place where you notice the level design this is surprisingly good as the devs have made clear for a long time dead island 2 is more of an open hub location with you noticing that the levels are a bit more linear or puzzle or trap based opening doors moving through areas and unlocking shortcuts it's a totally different feel than in the original game and like it or not it's got its own vibe and that includes how the game moves. See, you get abilities like jump kicking and others more story-based that are awesome, but one thing this game basically doesn't have is an overall climb anything kind of style to it. This isn't Dying Light. It's not zombie parkour at all. It's characters who are locked mostly to the streets and the locations themselves, more likely to use stairs than somehow sprouting old ninja climbing claws you could buy in a 1980s magazine. That cycle continues as it makes those shortcuts more respected as an actual gameplay element than they might have been before if you could just run over a wall. And speaking of running, the opposite of that is sneaking, and that's where we talk about stealth. And I think this is a mixed bag in this game. As you can see from some of the footage here, many of the zombies can hear you regardless if you're knelt down with your flashlight off. The system seems to be more based on if it's going to make a situation tense or just fun for them, they're going to have you ignore the stealth. Admittedly, after I realized this, I didn't use stealth as much as I had wanted to. It does work sometimes, but like many things in Dead Island 2, it's give and take, which in my opinion is really not the way that mechanic should work. But does the game put in the work for the graphics? Well, chopping up zombies hasn't looked this good in a long time. It's not perfect animations. For example, double leg kicking still looks like legs just stab out from your chest to hit the enemy. But hanging out near a trap and then kicking a zombie into it, watching their legs get blown off and then rolling around into a pool of water that you're just throwing a battery into, and that begins to shock all the enemies, is awesome. Lighting in the gore system utilize this creepy and ultimately disturbing partnership, consistently delivering that burned out look of the sun on heat cracked sidewalks with dudes in surfer shorts whose biggest problem is that something unnerving is inside them and apparently wants out versus the characters that look like crusty thespians at a coffee shop just one espresso away from making it big on their next novel the end times which has unfortunately now made them the main character this is all handled very well i like those characters and i like the lighting system the gore system lets you chop and smash and chuck and burn and electrify smash and destroy every enemy you face. Dissolving enemies down into their specific parts and battles is one of the most enjoyable parts of Dead Island 2. On the PlayStation 5, it runs at a very steady clip, usually hitting 60, though it did take a couple stutter steps, especially when a large number of enemies were on screen, and I was in last resort mode, tossing explosives into groups of enemies while I groped for an exit. The game on consoles does not have a performance mode that I could find, but it does have an FOV slider. I messed around with this, lowest to fisheye camera highest, and honestly, 
the FPS difference seemed pretty negligible. However, the FOV without being raised is so damn tight on consoles it might as well be called a half-person game instead of a first-person game. I'm not even sure why that's an option. The PC version runs surprisingly well, and this time frame of games that seem to consistently chug on PC, regardless of the speed that you have, it runs much closer to what I would expect. Getting some frame rate drops when huge numbers of enemies appear on screen with the 2080, with most settings on higher medium, makes sense for what you are seeing. And while there are a couple exceptions, Dead Island 2 on the PC is technically, at least, a far more solid version than some of the other more recent titles on PC that have been piped to us hot on day one. Be aware, crossplay isn't actually in here. Cross gen is. However, older base platforms like your PS4 and your Xbox cannot host the multiplayer game. It has to be somebody on a next gen. Graphically, I like the game. Location wise, I love the lighting system that it worked. And of course, that destruction system of the zombies is top notch. When it comes to the audio presentation, this is actually quite important in this game. For example, sound. Dead Island 2, especially when outside, is great environmentally playing out. And the game's use of 3D audio can help you identify where enemies are in some of the more cranked out locations. However, in the interiors, I did find the sounds and especially their processing to be really artificial, regardless of any setting I used on the PlayStation through headphones or through the speaker systems, especially in rooms where, for all intents and purposes, it was pretty much a closet. But the echo was closer to someone finding that huge garage or basement slider in their reverb setting in some kind of audio panel. I did hear that in the preview, a couple of people had noticed this and it continues to be a bit of an issue here. It's not exactly great sounding in some of those parts. Nevertheless, the sound and the direction cues work mostly in combination with the game's stealth and health system. When you're low on health, watching out for an enemy isn't just a visual thing. You can use the sound to verify if enemies are nearby or waiting to attack you, which can be the difference between life and death, which is a very thin line in Dead Island 2. So the sound works, but there are some issues. When it comes to the music, this opens with a scattered and a plucky version of an almost Desperado-style musical theme. The game's choice of atmospheric backgrounds, as well as a couple more heady and cultivated pieces during particular cutscenes, work very well. The choice of music for boss and miniboss-style thematic tunes I was not a huge fan of. The commercial-sounding tracks during those moments fits. It's just not really my jam. Not bad, though, and the guitar strumming off-kilter theme during the pause screen is awesome. It has an almost cowboy horror style to it. How does it work in this game? Well, the music does offer attention and it adds to that atmospheric layering of suspense and horror when the game's visuals aren't enough or when it wants to pick up the action in the moments prior to you seeing something. And that nails it. Speaking of nailing it, the voice. So this is a great deal like the first game. Aside from a very few over-the-top characters, a lot of the characters here you meet have less punch than the original game, but also this feeds back into the situation where the first game was in such an odd location, and this is not so much. That does not mean that there aren't some crazy pants characters here. This includes accents and location-specific slangs and nomenclature that are used, which I really liked. That doesn't mean I love the story, which I'll get to in a second. The story delivery is about three parts over the top, one part solid moments. A telling of anarchy after the dead of the world rise up. And characters that you meet as you explore, some of them sad, others just creepy. And a few surprisingly interesting to the point where I found myself feeling they were apt enough to have a small side DLC themselves in the future. The voices in the game do elevate the characters and the extra work. Even for characters that are insufferable, Add to that, I mean, not every character is going to be liked, and Dead Island 2's voice work lets that player hate the character, but not really hate the voice work itself. When this all comes together, and when you're deep down dirty inside of Dead Island 2, does it end up being fun? It is a very odd game, right from the start. A game that at times feels like it's so out of place, it could almost be a 360 feel to its gameplay, but then also has some systems running, for example, to simulate flesh and gore that are obviously far, far beyond that. It's a couple trick horse that can overstay its welcome, and just when you're a tiny bit bored, or have you faced somebody that you just don't think you can get past without possibly calling in a friend, you figure it out. And the gameplay loop, while not perfect, is an epoxy that keeps the different parts mostly together. And it is uneven at times. It is also pleasantly comfortable in what it offers, even if there's a bit too much repetition in the mid-game. The tightening down of the locations generally feels more engaging than the original game, which I 
loved. And gameplay, even though you still have up to three-player combat and exploration, is excellent whether it's co-op or single player. Unless you're expecting true open world, which you're not going to get here. Dead Island 2, for better or worse, is not at all going for that. The longevity here is not artificially extended by waypoints research bunkers to track down, or some tower to climb. It does have occasional side missions that require extra thinking and reward with more game information, and that is awesome. However, one of the biggest problems that rears its head in Dead Island 2, and you have to be prepared for this, and it does impact the fun factor, is difficulty spikes. This seems to be a reflection of a game that's got started and stopped more times than a downtown city Uber, and there are sections that are ruthless, from one huge event to another to another with almost no time to explore or get money and enemies. It gets harder and harder, each boss battle building up. Until you realize a solid two and a half hours in, you've been funneled through these main mission sections to tell a story. There's just not as much meat on those bones in some of the parts that I would have liked. When it comes to the rating, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, maybe get it on a deep, deep sale or never touch it kind of rating system. I think games have an obligation to reward investment with entertainment. And while each game's calculation of that final equity has to be at the very least recognizable, despite differences between the game, Dead Island 2 delivers just what I expected with its own equation and without doubt its own way of solving it, which isn't always perfect, but always seemed to be fun enough to pull me back. If you need an every world open style sandbox, don't apply this one. If you want balanced perfection and a seamless series of perfectly balanced encounters, this also isn't for you. But it was for me. Fun Factor wins out. It's not an amazing game, but collectively, it's a great time. So that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, maybe subscribe. If you didn't, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe anyway. You can check out the Patreon where we all come together to talk about games. We have an amazing time and it helps me continue to buy the games, to do the reviews. So my money is on the line just like yours. You can jump in there. We got some cool swag. We do some Dungeons and Dragons. We do some streaming of the events, all that kind of stuff. Regardless, you know what? Here we go, diving into the really busy part of this next month. I hope all you guys find at least two, three, maybe four games that you ultimately love. And games like this, which aren't perfect, are still out there for those people who can deal with a little the bit of the idiosyncrasies. Sort of like when you listen to these reviews. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week. They're getting closer. We need to go. Okay, got you picked. Emma? I mean, perhaps we should stay. Darling, the world needs you. They'll protect them. Oh. Be a good volunteer, that one. Okay, Michael, if you're sure. Here is my address, in case you change your mind. Good luck. Where's the GNT? Keep it chilled. Oh. What's up, Cody? Hey, what's up? Watch this. Episode number 100. Can you believe it? It's yeah. insane. How did we get here? No idea. Ask our Cody. What I actually want to ask our G crew is, have you guys been on that new urban rumor thing? What rumor thing? Oh, check this. Brain eaters. <laughs> yeah, right. This sounds like they've got yours already. Oh, come on. Hear me out. So I was at the bar. <laughs> <laughs>